Ron, can you hear me? Ron, can you hear me? Ron, can you hear me? I can hear you, John. The church hasn't unmuted its lights. The Lord be with you. I'm Pastor Liz, and with me is Pastor Dexter, and we're just so excited that you're with us here today at Longview Presbyterian Church. We are a community of faith that is seeking Christ's way, and we are welcoming all people here in this space. And if you're here in the sanctuary, we're glad you're here. If you're on Zoom, we're also glad you're here with us. As the um, light of the Christ candle brought to us by Darcy today demonstrates, Jesus is here. Jesus is with us, warming this space with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let's take a deep breath and remember that as we arrive here together. I've got a few announcements for you about how you can get more plugged into the life of this church family. The first one is that everyone is welcome to join us for an hour of Zoom fellowship and prayer time this Tuesday, February 14th at 7 p.m. using the same church Zoom link that is always on the front page of our website. We know it's Valentine's Day, and I promise you this is the best way for you to spend Valentine's Day with your church family. Everybody's welcome, and we hope that you will join us. The Christian Education Committee invites you to journey with us through the season of Lent, which is coming up, with a daily devotional. This daily Lent devotional explores the connection between internal contemplation and our outward actions. And you can pick them up at the Connection Corner today, right? Yeah, the little corner back there with the sign, pick up one of your Lenten devotionals to kind of daily walk you through um, those exercises as we go through the season of Lent. Uh, the readings for that start on Ash Wednesday, which is February 22nd. And speaking of Ash Wednesday, I know it feels like we just finished with Christmas, but here we are heading towards, heading towards Lent. Uh, we will have an Ash Wednesday service on Wednesday, February 22nd at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary or on Zoom. And this will be a time of liturgy, song, scripture, and the tradition, imposition of ashes, which go on our forehead, reminding us of the fragility of life and our belovedness in the arms of God. Um, you're welcome to join from home if you want to join online. And if you do that, make sure you've got some ashes at home or some sort of uh, dark makeup or whatever works for you at home. Make sure you have it available for that worship service. And we hope to see you there. And then, beginning Sunday, February 26th, the first Sunday in the season of Lent, the Christian Education Committee will be offering a five-week Lenten study of the four Gospels. The gatherings will take place right after worship upstairs in the couch room, as we call it, uh, from about 11.30 to 1 p.m., on the first Sunday, which is again the 26th, you'll receive study and reference materials from Pastor Ron Naff, who is going to be leading that course and facilitating the conversations. Uh, and by March 26th, the end of the series, you will know about the similarities, the differences, and the themes of the four Gospels. So come from that time of some Bible learning. Everybody is welcome. We also want to remind you again to make sure that you have on your calendars a memorial service for our beloved Diana Spring, who passed away on January 19th of this year. That will be Saturday, February 25th at 2 p.m. right here on, in the sanctuary or on Zoom if you need to worship online that day. 
Um, anyone who loves to sing is welcome to join Diana's Memorial Choir. And we're going to have two special rehearsals to prepare for that day. The first one is a week from today, next Sunday, February 19th, right after church. We'll do some practice with the choir here in this space. And then again on Thursday, February 23rd at 5.30 p.m. So we hope you'll join us for that time to really memorialize and remember our Diana um, and the choir she loved and this place that she for decades filled with music. Um, and a special note, Pastor Dexter and I are collecting pictures from Diana's years of ministry here. We have already gone through the albums that are upstairs to scan some of those. We want to make a slideshow. If you have pictures at home of you and Diana or some engagement you have with Diana here at church, if you'd be willing to scan and send them to me, we would love to add those into the slideshow. And now we have a special short announcement from Pastor Dexter. That's right. I'll try and keep it brief. Uh, we want to invite everybody to a public meeting this Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m. here in the church to learn about Sunrise Village. Sunrise Village is the affordable housing that is being built next door on the lot that we donated to Housing Opportunities of Southwest Washington. Uh, this public meeting meeting is open to the public, uh, so this is a great time to learn about the project, to ask your questions, but also to build some relationships with our neighbors as they come in with their concerns and questions as well. We want to be a gracious host uh, and help this project go as smoothly as possible. Um, there will also be a Zoom link that will be posted. Uh, it's not our church link. Uh, um, housing Opportunities will be hosting that, but you can join via Zoom or in person. We would love to have you there. I would now like to invite Kay forward to lead us in our call to worship. Please join me in the responsive call to worship as printed in your bulletin. Happy are those who walk in the way of the Lord, who seek God with their whole hearts. Let us worship together. I now invite you to rise in body or spirit in our opening hymn, number 37, Let All Things Now Living. take or keep your seat. All right, it is time for our kids' time. So if you are a kid and want to come forward and hang out with Pastor Dexter, you can be a part of kids' time. Everyone's invited to participate. So anyone who wants to come up, come on up now. We're going to have a little hangout together. And Pastor Dexter is basically just a big kid. So if you join him, it'll make him feel a little less lonely. 
Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Okay, so today we're going to hear some things that Jesus told his friends about what happens when they feel angry. And one thing that you'll notice is that Jesus does not say, when you feel angry, stop it. <laughs> he doesn't say that. Because Jesus knows that it's a normal thing for humans to be angry sometimes. So he helps his friends know what to do with their anger so that they don't hurt the people they love and they don't hurt themselves. So later, everyone's going to hear about that. But right now, I want to invite you to learn a prayer that can help us when we get really mad. So if you feel comfortable, close your eyes and think about a time when you just got really mad about something. Okay, that didn't take me very long. So if you want, let's go ahead and practice this prayer that I'm going to call the angry prayer. So is everybody ready facing me? Okay, so yeah, look this way. So this prayer has some words we can say, but I want you to help me do the hand motions and the body motions, okay? And again, you can pray this prayer whenever you feel really mad. Here we go. God, we do get angry. We get angry. Sometimes we get so angry that our fists ball up and we want to hit and hurt. Can you ball your fists like this? <laughs> so angry that we want to stomp our feet. Can you stomp your feet? So angry our arms and face and whole body feels tight. So angry our whole face and body feel tight. Good job, everyone. You're doing a great job. Sometimes we want to scream and yell. So let's let out a really good yell together. I mean it. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah. Ah! Okay, so can you all take a deep breath with me? Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. So reach out your hands like this. God, be with us when we get angry. God, be with us when we get angry. Loosen our arms and relax our faces. Loosen our arms and relax our faces. Help us think of ways to fix what is wrong. Help us to think of ways to fix what's wrong. Be with us when we try to make things better. Be with us when we try to make things better. Oops. <laughs> In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So remember, being angry is not wrong. Being angry is normal. It is a part of being a human. It's just one of the many feelings that we have. And what I want you to know about God is that with God, there is always space for every single feeling you have. You never have to hide from God. Okay, so I want to have us do another repeat after me prayer as we get ready to go. I'm really thankful you boys joined us today. Thank you for keeping Pastor Dexter company. He appreciates it. So if you want, you can repeat after me in this prayer. God is with us when we are angry. God is with us when we are angry. God gets it. God gets it. Sometimes God is even angry along with us. Sometimes God is angry along with us. Always God helps us uncurl. Always God helps us uncurl. Loosen up. Loosen up. Relax. Relax. And find new ways to solve problems. And find new ways to solve problems. We have God's promise on that. We have God's promise on that. Thanks, God. Thanks, Thanks, God. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up, boys and Dexter. We appreciate you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Our God is a loving God who is with us no matter what is going on in our lives. 
And in that spirit, we confess our sins before God and one another so that we can choose the way of life, so that we could have life abundant that is promised to us. And we start our confession time by naming that the land our church occupies was stolen by white settlers from the Cowlitz Indian tribe. This moment, when we say these words together, is meant to be a lot more than just words. It's meant to be a commitment to choose life for all creation and act in solidarity with our indigenous neighbors. So join me in our call and response land acknowledgement. It is vital to honor those who came before us and acknowledge the long history of what is now Southwest Washington State. This area has been home to ancestors of the Cowlitz Indian tribe for thousands of years. The land with its rich resources enabled the Cowlitz people to flourish and they stewarded the land with their traditional culture. Today, we must appreciate the persistence of the Cowlitz people and the important role they play in our region as together we steward the land for all our descendants. We continue in prayerful confession. Holy God, we confess that we bow down before other gods. We have turned our hearts away from you. Our worship of work and devotion to consumerism disorders our love of you and each other. Forgive us, God, and mend what is broken, that we may be one with you. Amen. Amen. Beloved, by the mercy of Christ, all of our sins are forgiven. Sing praises with an upright heart as we learn the ways of following God. Amen. This is the time when we invite you to pass the peace of Christ to the people around you. And if you're new today, I'm going to teach you the sign language, if you'd like to use that when you greet your neighbors. Um, so the word for peace, you start like this with your hands, and then you switch them. That's become quiet. Become quiet is how you say peace in sign language. So become quiet with you. And... If you want to say and also with you, you go like this, and you use your hand, and also with you. So, LPC family, may the peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Turn around and greet your neighbors. Pass the peace of Christ. is back to its status, status as rowdy in the sanctuary, which we love to see. And as you make your way to your seats, I would invite Kay Naff, our liturgist today, to come forward, and she's going to lead us in the prayer for illumination and the first reading of scripture. Thank you, Kay. It's here for you. Sorry, I was busy piecing. <laughs> Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Loving God, anoint us with your Holy Spirit as we hear your word this day. Fill us with your truth that we may walk in the ways of God and to the glory of your realm. 
Amen. Amen. Our first scripture this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 15, excuse me, 15 through 20. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from the gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 21 through 37. Listen to Jesus as he speaks to his disciples. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a sibling, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a sibling, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you'll be liable to the hell of fire. So when you're offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your sibling has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your sibling, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with them, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool. Or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. What? I was following the law. I was following the letter of the law. My parents said, stop touching your brother. 
I did. I stopped touching him. I was following the law, just as it was said. Like a good son, I did not break my parents' rules. But somehow, I don't know how, my brother was still annoyed, and my parents were angry at me. <laughs> what had I done wrong? Tell me, what had I done wrong? And I wonder if, it's, if Jesus feels like he's dealing with a similar problem as he addresses uh, the crowd that day. Moses had given good and helpful laws to the Jewish people from way back when. And, Jewish, and Jesus had lived his life by these laws, saying in just the previous verses to our passage today that not one dot, not one stroke of the pen would be removed from the law. So it's clear from our passage today that Jesus is not rejecting the law, as this passage has sometimes been misinterpreted. Instead, I think, Jesus is teaching us about the spirit of the law. Jesus is focusing on the laws of God that help govern and care for our relationships with one another. Jesus isn't trying to make more laws, but Jesus is trying to instill an ethic of love. An ethic of love and care for our neighbor, as Jesus clearly highlighted throughout his life. So let's look through these different aspects that Jesus is uh, looking at today. First, the question of murder. Okay, everyone thinks that's wrong, right? Okay, great. So when Jesus says that anger could also lead to condemnation, this seems a little intense, doesn't it? And I want to pause, just like Pastor Liz said in the kids' sermon this morning, anger is not wrong. We clearly see Jesus get angry later in the Gospels, and he flips some tables, and he whips some people with a whip that were taking advantage of the poor. Okay, Jesus did it. All right. But if it's not anger that's bad... It might be how anger shapes our actions. Jesus talks about how anger can lead to insulting others, can lead to breaking relationships, can lead to murder. So from the most extreme breaking of a relationship with murder to some of the more mundane of breaking through using hurtful words, Jesus highlights that reconciliation is needed, that relationship is important. So much so that it actually seems that Jesus says that reconciliation is more important than worship. Okay. But this does follow in line with the prophets who would decry worship that was being done while the worshipers would come and they'd offer gifts and they would worship full-heartedly, but then they would go out on their day-to-day -day and they would oppress people and they would keep people in poverty. Jesus wants us to know that we need to keep this ethic of love, this ethic of caring for our neighbor, more than just going to church on Sunday. All right. Now Jesus really dives in the deep end. Jesus continues on his extrapolation of the law and is engaging uh, in the, the topic of adultery next. Now this one, if you've been around church for a while, has been really misused especially in patriarchal societies, in order to trap people into abusive marriages. And I believe that that interpretation is harmful and should be discarded. But I don't think we should discard what Jesus is saying either. I think that would miss out on this ethic that Jesus is wanting to share with us. If the ethic that Jesus is sharing is care for other humans, then I don't think Jesus is wanting people to stay in abusive relationships. In fact, Jesus seems to single out men in his context, in their treatment of women in his society, calling out lust. And I think Jesus continues teaching about this ethic of love, uh, the love of neighbor, to condemn the way that his society is treating women more like property than like children of God. This teaching of Jesus reinforces the dignity of women. It's not meant to trap people in bad relationships. Jesus' ethic is built on the law, and it requires that we care for the worth of all human beings, calling us to live out those values to make sure that all people flourish. So then Jesus moves on to the idea of uh, swearing, of vows, of making promises. It seems clear that Jesus wants us to keep our word. And I think this is important to note that in Jesus' day, a person's vow was probably as important as our signature is today. You can't do anything today without signing something. You pay with a credit card, needs a signature. 
move to an apartment or a house, lots of paperwork to fill out. If you get a new job, you have to sign something all the time. And back then, that community value was on keeping your word. That was the contract they were signing. That was the contract that they were keeping. If you did not keep your word, you would lose credibility in your community. That same community that you needed to survive. And most importantly, it would break the relationship you have with another person. I think sometimes when we hear all of these intensifications, as I like to call them from Jesus, we might hear another checklist to accomplish. Did not murder, did not call someone a fool, did not lust, did not swear on earth or on my head. But actually, I don't think they're meant as a checklist. They're meant to lead us into flourishing, just like we heard in the passage from Deuteronomy today. There's life and flourishing, or there's death. These intensifications are not meant to trap us in a legal framework, but instead they're meant to expose us to an ethic of concern for our neighbor. They're not meant to privilege the law, the written words, over and above human relationship. Instead, they are the path to a right relationship with God, a path to right relationship with our neighbors and even to ourselves. So I ask you today, what rules are we living by? What laws are we privileging over and above human flourishing? Work 40 hours a week, will that give you worth? Hoarding wealth like you're supposed to? Call the police when you see someone suspicious. Ignore the homeless person on the corner asking for money or help. Avoid poor neighborhoods in town. Make assumptions based on clothing or language or skin color. Or even don't ask others for help. Do it yourself. What are other rules that you can think of that might need to be changed or discarded or maybe intensified like Jesus did? And I think the important question as we look at what rules are governing our lives are, are these rules leading to the flourishing of life or are they leading to the destruction of relationships? Because that is the ethic that Jesus is calling us to, an ethic that cares for our neighbor's flourishing, that cares for life and life abundant, that doesn't do things that will destroy or harm or hurt others. And Jesus calls us and all of his disciples to live toward this ethic, not letting culture or law or anything else being used as an excuse to stop loving, to stop caring. Can we go and live this law of love? Let us try. Amen? Amen. All right, friends, I invite you to join me uh, in our responding hymn, Rising in Body or in Spirit. Number 306, blessed be the tie that binds.
Amen. You may take or keep your seats. We continue worshiping together in prayer, sharing our joys and concerns for all of us to be praying for one another. You can send your chats through Zoom. Uh, you can always uh, write on the prayer request sheet at the entrance to the sanctuary every Sunday, or you can reach out to the pastors in advance. You can also raise your hand, and Pastor Liz will bring you a microphone for you to speak your prayer request. Uh, we invite you to share your name uh, and to speak directly into the microphone so that we can all hear you. Um, once we've heard the prayer request, one of the pastors will pray, and we'll end each prayer by saying, God, in your grace. And we invite you to respond, trusting in God's grace. You receive our prayers, O oh God. After we've heard our prayers, we will have a prayer of silence for the prayer concerns that maybe feel too intimate or uh, uh, deep to speak out loud in this moment. We trust that God receives those prayers, the deepest cries of our hearts. Let us begin in prayer. Um, we pray with Kay Naff for uh, safe travels for Ron, who is preaching in Astoria this morning. Holy and loving God, we ask that you surround Ron with safe uh, travel with him and all the cars around him. Bless his preaching and time in Astoria that it would be a gift to both Ron and the congregation, and we ask that you bring him back safely. God, in your grace, receive our prayers, O oh God. Good morning, I'm Alan. Um, I'd like prayers for the people of Turkey and Syria that are suffering so greatly with, with these earthquakes. Um, prayers that they would find as many survivors as they can before they begin their cleanup. And hopefully we can find some way that we can give um, actually uh, some sort of a fund so that we can help support this effort. Let us pray. Holy One, we grieve with our siblings in Turkey and Syria in the aftermath of these disasters. And we ask that you would help the rescuers find people in the rubble to rescue them. We pray that aid would flow freely to that part of the world to support them as they try to recover and heal and rebuild. And that you'd show each one of us what it means to act in solidarity with them in this time of suffering. God, in your grace, you receive our prayers, O oh God. We also pray for uh, Kay's co-worker friends, Jesse and Denise Walters. We've been praying for them um, the last couple of weeks for a cancer diagnosis, um, which is now looking more like end-of-life um, stages. Let us pray. God of life and God of death, we know that you are holding Jesse and Denise as they face um, this ending, this parting, in the midst of anxiety, of pain, of fear, of peace. We ask that you would be there holding them closely, giving them space to lament, to cry, to hope, to hold, and to say goodbye. We pray that they would be free from pain and that they would have all that they need to say goodbye in the ways they need to. Surround them now and in the days to come. God, in your grace, receive our prayers, O oh God. I'm Robert Mumford, and I noticed that the video people just stayed right here because I was right next to Alan and they didn't have to move the camera. <laughs> so, um, I just want to pray for Kat and, Ch and Chuck, who are our safe parking uh, friends. Uh, they've had different challenges this week. On Friday night, their propane ran out. Mm. And so yesterday, I was busy taking them to get more propane. And then the propane uh, heater did not work properly. <laughs> so we got through the night by duct tape, <laughs> the magic the magic duct tape and hopefully I'm praying that they will find solutions to a number of challenges as they face homelessness and just to expand upon that prayer every time I work with people who are houseless and earthquakes and things like that cause that as well as poverty um, the challenges that these people face are amazing considering what they have to live through and try to get through every day 
is so life-threatening and health-threatening that they need, all houseless people need our prayers that they will find a way for more stable living. Let's pray. Holy One, the night you were born, your family didn't have a house to sleep in for you to be born. And so you know what it is like to not have a place to live and to rest your head. And we lift up today, especially our new friends, Kat and Chuck, as they face houselessness and try to survive in their RV. We pray that you would open the floodgates of resources to them, that you would find a stable and permanent place for them to make a home where they can feel safe and provided for. We thank you for Robert's ministry of walking alongside of them and for the ministry of this church in finding ways to be in solidarity with those who are unjustly facing houselessness. And we pray that you would uh, just show all of us what our piece of the puzzle is in addressing these issues of poverty. God, in your grace. We receive our prayers, oh God. We pray with Mary Winter for Kay and Gary Clinch. Um, as Gary is losing a lot of mobility, we lift them up in prayer. Healing and holding God, we ask that you surround Gary as he is losing mobility. Provide him whatever is needed medically, emotionally, spiritually in these days. Surround him and Kay with a community that will care for them, lift them up, provide for them in spaces of need, and will mostly make space for them to uh, be together. Um, we just ask that you would surround them with your care, your comfort, and your love. God, in your grace, you receive our prayers, O oh God. Yes, my name is Cynthia. I would like prayers for Sarah Peterson over, uh, Hancock for, she's the CEO for Emergency Support Shelter. She's gone through her bout of cancer, ovarian cancer. And uh, the test that they did, you know, it didn't go the way it should go. However, it's the next steps for her healing because we all have a cross to bear and we all have some kind of diseases within us. So if we hold together and pray for her and each other for healing. Holy One, we lift up uh, Sarah Peterson Hancock in her continued battle with ovarian cancer. And after getting some disheartening news, we pray that you would re-energize her and give her double, triple support, everything she needs to continue this journey with cancer. We pray for effective treatment. We pray for deep healing for her, for those who love her, and for everyone we meet. God, in your grace. You receive our prayers, oh God. Do we have any prayer requests from Zoom? No? Okay. We'll close now with a prayer of silence, trusting that God hears the prayers on our hearts. Let us pray. God, in your grace, you receive our prayers, O oh God. And we join together praying the Lord's Prayer to our parenting God, just as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said that if someone has something against you, first be reconciled to them, and then come and offer your gift. So we say, in peace, let us bring our offerings to God this morning. Today we have the opportunity to give financially to the work of Christ through this church. We love God, and we want to share that love with others. 
Recognizing that we often do give in ways other than uh, uh, financially, we invite you to fill out the offering slips, which should be in your hymnals, a variety of wonderful colors. Um, and you can write uh, any gifts of time or talent that you've given this week and place them in the plate as it passes by. We'll display them here under the cross, a symbol of how we follow Christ in a self-giving love. Let us celebrate all the gifts that make us the body of Christ as we enjoy an offertory from our church musician, Noel Carlson.
Holy God, we offer you these gifts with thanks, so that together we may plant and water the seeds of your world. May we be your faithful servants as we cultivate your love, knowing that in all we accomplish, it is you who gives the growth. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join us for our sending hymn, number 747, The Lord Now Sends Us Forth. take or keep your seats. Thank you so much for joining us here at Longview Presbyterian Church. After the benediction, we'll enjoy a postlude from our church musician, Noel, and we invite you to stick around and get to know some of the fine folks here. Now receive this benediction. Love the Lord. Choose the good and hold fast to God so that you and your neighbors may flourish. May the wisdom of God, the love of Christ, and the peace of the Holy Spirit shine brightly in your lives today and every day. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Amen.